Hi, in this lecture, we are looking at the general principles, mechanism of common action, just generally. Okay. So, common mechanism of action includes the following. Adenylocyclase mechanism, phospholipase mechanism, steroid hormone mechanism, tyrosine kinase mechanism, guanylate cyclase mechanism. When you see, there's a AS here. So these are enzymes. So hormone basically activates the enzymes. Okay. And that, we know that enzymes are biological catalysts that speeds up chemical reactions in the body. And we know that a mechanism is an established process by which uh, something takes place. So from the physiological context, uh, this has been postulated mechanisms by which hormones act. Some, they activate these enzymes. Some hormones, they activate the phospholipase C. Some hormones, like the steroid hormones, they have a mechanism of action associated with gene transcription, okay, influencing the DNA. Some hormones like tyrosine kinase, they activate tyrosine kinase like insulin. Others activate guanylate, uh, guanylate cyclase. It's called guanylate cyclase mechanism. This table summarizes and it categorizes or puts the hormones in various uh, mechanism of action. Like, let's start from the guanylate. We just have a few. Two of them, nitronitriatic peptide released by the heart and nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. It acts by guanylate cyclase mechanism. Others that activate this enzyme tyrosine kinase, we have insulin, insulin like growth factor 1, growth hormone, and prolactin. Okay. And then we have um, steroid hormones, all the steroids, they act by this mechanism. And then we have the phospholipase C mechanism. Mainly these are lipid soluble hormones. Not lipid soluble, water soluble hormones. Okay, they usually act by phospholipase, also adenylocyclase. Most of these are water soluble hormones. Now, let's look at what happens to those hormones that activate adenylocyclase. First of all, adenylocyclase, we know it's, a, it's one of the most uh, polyphyletic enzymes. Polyphylum, if I can use the term from botany meaning that it comes from various sources, okay? It has various common source. But this adenylocyclase, it's, um, it's a membrane. It's a membrane-associated enzyme. So step one, the water-soluble hormones are membrane-soluble, so they cannot penetrate the phospholipid. They bind to the membrane receptor. Number two, the binding activates the G protein. We know what the G protein is. And the activated G protein will further activate the adenylocyclase. The activated adenylocyclase will convert ATP to cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP will convert these protein kinases to active form, which are called activated protein kinases. And the protein kinases will phosphorylate uh, many other enzymes until a physiological action is, is noticed. So that's why our, in the beginning we called, the, we called this transduction. It's a cascade of uh, reaction. A particular reaction leads to another reaction, just like that until you reach a physiological action. So this is a adenylocyclase mechanism. It's the same principle when you look at phospholipase C. But in this case, it's, uh, it's phospholipase C, not adenylocyclase. Phospholipase C is also 
a membrane associated enzyme, sometimes abbreviated as PLC. Okay. The purpose of this enzyme phospholipase, it means it cleaves a phospholipid. This phospholipid which is cleaved is this one, PIP2. Phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate. It's cleaved to form DAG and IP3. Okay, let's start. The first messenger hormone binds to the receptor. This receptor is coupled to the G protein. So this binding causes the change. The GTP, GDP is replaced with GTP. And it, the subunit, specifically the alpha subunit, comes out of this G protein and activates the enzyme phospholipase C. So when the enzyme is activated, it will start breaking down this uh, phospholipid, which is also located within the phospholipid bilayer. So this phospholipid is broken down to diacylglycerol and IP3. Okay, so DAG and IP3, these are second messengers. They have, they have amplified the signal. For example, cyclic uh, IP3 is known to open up calcium stores from sacroplasmic reticulum. And when the calcium is released, it binds to calcium camodulin, to camodulin, uh, forming what we call calcium camodulin. And we know calcium camodulin is important in activation of my, uh, myosin light chain kinases required for smooth muscle contraction. So same applies DAG, it's the second messenger, which activates the protein uh, kinases and also brings about uh, physiological response. In some literature, you find that DAG combines with calcium to bring about physiological responses. So that's why this mechanism is uh, common to hormones that brings about, about muscle contraction. Like oxytocin, we know that oxytocin is required during child labor to contract the, the, the womb, the uterus. ADH is also required, antidiuretic hormone required to contract the blood vessels. Now, this other mechanism, it's called the steroid hormone mechanism. This is uh, common to all steroid hormones. The steroid hormones is uh, lipid soluble, so therefore, no receptors located there for the steroid hormone. So it enters, penetrates the cytosol. Okay, remember here the cytosol, here there's nucleus, um, another cytosol here. So it penetrates the cytosol, binds to the cytoplasmic receptor. This receptor, it, it has a DNA binding domain, it has a hormone binding domain. So when that happens, they form a, a hormone receptor complex. That hormone receptor complex, it undergoes dimerization. Dimer means it divides into two. Okay, so the receptor forms dimers, which divides into two, with a hormone bound there, another hormone bound there. So these dimers, they are the one that binds to the DNA on specific points on the DNA, which are called specific or steroid response elements, SRAE. So when that happens, they will it will activate transcription. It will also activate RNA polymerase, which is a major uh, transcription enzyme. If you remember what transcription is, it's a process by which genes DNA sequence is what? Copied or transcribed to make an RNA. So transcription will be activated, messenger RNA will be produced, which will be transported into the cytoplasm, and then it will interact with the ribosomes, forming what uh, forming a protein in a process called translation. So the new protein can be anything, depending on the hormone. For the example, we know aldosterone is the steroid hormone, okay. And the function of aldosterone is to increase sodium reabsorption. So a new protein can be a sodium channel, like epithelial sodium channel. Okay. So it, the, the new protein can be anything depending on the hormone which is bound there. This is another mechanism. It's the same steroid hormone. It's just another diagram. 
So most hydrophobic steroids are bound to plasma protein carriers. Only unbound hormones get diffused into the target cell. So the steroid hormone receptor are in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. The receptor hormone complex binds to the DNA and activates or repre uh, represses one or more genes. So some genes may be activated, some genes may be repressed. So activated genes will create new messenger RNA that moves back to the cytoplasm. So translation produces new proteins for cell process. Some steroid hormones also bind to membrane receptors that use second messenger system to create rapid response. Okay, to create rapid response. So the concept of second messenger here is what is important. We are seeing that uh, a hormone is a first messenger. It activates second messenger. And those second messengers, they are the one that activates the proteins. So the concept of second messenger, it's uh, very important. Remember, a second messenger, these are intracellular signaling molecule. Okay, so they trigger physiological changes at what? At cellular level. Okay. There are various physiological changes, like proliferation, differentiation, migration of cells, survival, apoptosis, which is called programmed cell death, depolarization. All these are triggered by second messengers. Okay. So cyclic AMP is a second messenger, produces these functions. It's not the only second messengers. Others are calcium ions, which were stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Camodulin, it's also a second messenger. Okay, inositol triphosphate, which is IP3, it's a second messenger. If you can read here, IP3 acts on protein kinases C and causes physiological response by the release of calcium ions into the cytoplasm of the targeted cell. Okay, other second messengers are diacylglycerol, which is called DAG. So, we saw that diacylglycerol is also produced from PIP2. This is supposed to be a subscript. So it's phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate. It acts via protein kinases. Other second messenger are cyclic guanosine monophosphate. Okay, cyclic guanosine monophosphate function like cyclic AMP by acting on protein kinases. Okay, in summary, in summary, we need to know the modes of action of various hormones because these hormones, some, some of these hormones are used as drugs in cases of insufficiency, okay, synthetic hormones, okay, like insulin is a synthetic hormone, there are hormones like growth hormone, oxytocin, those are synthetic hormones, epinephrine, those are synthetic hormones. So it's important to understand the mechanism of uh, action of these hormones. So they act by this adenylyl mechanism, uh, cyclase mechanism. Others, they activate these enzymes called phospholipase. Others, they, they follow what we call the steroid hormone mechanism where genes are influenced. Others, like insulin, the tyrosine kinase mechanism, we'll look at it later on, and the guanylate cyclase mechanism. So this is where I end. This lecture has been on general principles or general principles rega regarding hormone mechanism of action. Okay. Thank you very much.